occurred to me the other day when I was looking at a picture on the official website of Mark Noble stood proudly, actually, behind Callum Marshall as he sat down with a pen in his hand. Probably not a four-colour pen like this one, you understand? But a pen in his hand, ready to sign his new West Ham contract. I'm guessing that he'd already signed the contract, by the way. He was just, he was just there for the photo opportunity. But I get it. It was good news. Mark Noble looked proud. He's every reason to look proud. Callum Marshall was a fine, fine player, as I understand it. 11 goals in six under-21 appearances this season. That's pretty damn impressive, and a few assists too. However, I couldn't help but think, this guy's got a tough job. And that was, I think, further rubber stamped in my own mind by what then happened in the game against Lincoln City. Now, I've already said in the previous video, I'm very, very pleased to get through the tie against Lincoln City. I, I absolutely am. If what it took was a scrappy sort of set-piece goal on a wet and windy night in Lincoln to get through to the next round, I'll take that. I'd much rather be in our position than Manchester City's position. I'm not speaking metaphorically. Uh, I am just talking about the specifics of the League Cup. However, I can't have been the only one that was disappointed by the lack of young players who were involved. Mubama, of course, uh, had, a, had a fair old uh, go, but I think there would be a lot of us who would wanted to see a few more young players involved in the team. Now, I certainly I don't mind so much when everybody that's playing is playing brilliantly. But I think bearing in mind a lot of the senior players were left back in London, some of the replacements that started against Lincoln didn't play very well at all and I find it hard to believe that none of the youngsters could have done better. Now this is not just about Callum Marshall of course. One of the best bits of news I've heard in the least last day or two is about Daniel Rigg or it might be Rigger. I don't actually know. Now uh, Rigg or Rigger whatever we want to call him is a really really good young player. I first noticed him last season. I was watching the um I was watching the FA Youth Cup team and George Earthy was playing and George Earthy's a really good player. The, the sort of player that well, we all sort of love. A number 10, uh, really close ball control, low centre of gravity, prodigiously talented, very, very gifted player. And it was amazing to see that team that won the FA Youth Cup last season because there was someone outstanding in, in every position. And I think that's one thing you can look at that crop of young talent and think actually there's some there's a bloody good goalkeeper there. There's a bloody good central defenders. I've, I've seen Casey, funny enough, play on the right side of defence as well. Um, and he looked all right there. But that being said, we've got Dan Chester, who's sort of being groomed to play as a right wing back and doing very, very well. You know, you can look at uh, somebody like Lewis Orford in midfield, who's I think is probably so good that it's allowed Freddie Potts to go out and um, and go on loan. And of course, Freddie Potts doing really well on loan. Freddie Potts is obviously uh, older than the age group that we're talking about. I think because of the talent in central midfield, it's probably going to allow us to allow a Conor Coventry to leave. We've got some really good players on the flanks. Uh, Kadua Sawyer, we've not mentioned him uh, so much, but uh, there certainly have been times when I've seen him play when he looks a really, really good player. Uh, of course, Mabama, and th there, are, there are many, many, many really good players. But I think the point is, when I tuned in to watch this team play, a lot of these guys I was very aware of. So when this little kid came off the bench, and I think he replaced Earthy, I was disappointed because you know what it's like. You watch a football match and you think, oh, OK, I'm enjoying watching this player, and now he's going to go off. It's a bit of a shame, isn't it? So uh, Earthy went off and this little kid came on. Well, of course, it was Daniel Rigg. My words, he was talented. Uh, by, by, very, very quickly, I wasn't disappointed. I was so disappointed that Earthy went off. He gave me the opportunity to look at somebody else. He played pretty much in his position and I thought he was, he was unplayable. So skillful, incredibly skillful. And I thought, wow, you know, because he's in the age group below. And I think, if I got it right at the moment, he's been primarily playing for the under-18s. He's not playing the under-21s. And he's 17. He's a really good player. We picked him up from Manchester City, by the way. And so it's nice to see that it sort of works the other way, isn't it? Because we've certainly lost a couple of players in that direction recently. Now, he's been so good, particularly in the last year, that a lot of other clubs have shown that they're interested in signing him. However, ex-West Ham United employee said yesterday... Um, 
via me, via me mate, Mark Carlaw over on the West Ham Way website that Rigger was about to sign a new contract at West Ham. That's really good news. He's a talented player. So off the back of Marshall signed his deal and also Earthy signed his deal again. Same thing, pen in hand. And uh, I think Mark Noble, possibly Mark Phillips as well, stood proudly behind him and rightly so. They're doing great work in the academy at the moment. Brilliant work. They're bringing through some fantastic youngsters. You don't have a lot, an awful big metric by which to measure young players. But so what you do have is the FA Youth Cup and you've got Premier League 2. You, you've, you've basically got the league form and you've got cup form. West Ham last season were excellent in both. This season are excellent in both. The last time I looked, West Ham were top of Premier League 2. Callum Marshall was the top scorer in Premier League 2. So last year, I think it's fair to say we had the best young team in the country. This year, same group of players moving up, still the best young team in the country. That's the metric you have. There's nothing else to measure them by. So with that in mind, I looked at Mark Noble and I only told the first part of this story just to really highlight the fact in case you don't know and, and you, don't, you haven't particularly followed it quickly, just to let you know how many good players we have. And, I, and I've left players out, by the way. And I looked at it and I, th I thought, OK, Mark Noble has been charged with the role of bringing these players through. So he is sporting director. Tim Steiton is director of football. Similarities, but an important difference between the two. Then when Mark Noble took up the role, we were hearing stories last season of him training with the under-18s. He wanted to get to know him, which I thought was, was really good. Well, that's great. I, as I understand it this season, I, I believe, and I might be wrong, but we spoke with um, Mark Phillips on our Patreon channel. Uh, but as, as I understand it, Mark may well have been looking at, at getting a promotion. Uh, from He's done great work in the academy, West Ham through and through, Mark. And um, he's obviously worked closely with a lot of these youngsters and he spoke very highly of a lot of the players that I've already mentioned. Also, Mark Noble was at pains to explain that by getting rid of players like Elise, uh, like Equa, a few of the others as well, it was going to allow, to allow a pathway for this crop that I've just dis discussed to come through and really prove themselves and make a pathway through to the first team. I thought, that's, that's great. That sounds brilliant. On, on the surface of it, it really does sound. It says a really good mantra. Uh, but I really do hope that it's a mantra that is endorsed and believed and embraced by the club rather than just a soundbite or a strapline. Sounds a bit saucy, strapline. Um, I mentioned it in the video that I did with Gio. When you walk onto the pitch, both at the London Stadium and at Upton Park, festooned everywhere and engraved literally at pitch side, there's a badge, West Ham badge, and it says, welcome to the Academy of Football. It was in the tunnel at Upton Park, where the players, were just before the players walked down the stairs, tunnel at Upton Park, players come out of the dressing rooms, walk down the stairs, along up some stairs, referees were on either side out, but just before you got to that, it's a big badge. Um, welcome to West Ham United, the Academy of Football. Now, the Academy of Football is a... No one's bestowing that honour upon us at West Ham. That's self-appointed, self-congratulatory, um, honorary sort of uh, self-appointed de <laughs> degree, if you want. We are the Academy of Football. And I think if you do that, I do think you have some sort of duty to carry that out and to see that through. So I also think it's pretty big boast. And I know there's reasons for us having it. And in the past, we have absolutely been that. But there have been times when we haven't particularly deserved that name. So I do think it's an important role at a club, at a club like West Ham. West, just, West Ham are not on their own at this. There's lots of clubs that have got a really, really good track record for bringing young players through. Ajax, I would imagine Ajax, possibly the most famous of all, but they all do it. Barcelona do it, Southampton do it, and, and many, many clubs in between the two. But we're the ones that call us that, the Academy of Football. And a sort of penny for David Moyes' thoughts when he steps over that crest that's on the floor. 
because this is why I think Mark Noble's got a really tough job on his hands. But maybe he knows something that we don't. Because for Callum Marshall to sign a new deal, for Daniel Rigger to sign a new deal, for George Earthy to sign a new deal, and everybody else that's either close to doing so or has just done so before, Mark must have given some form of reassurance. He absolutely had to. I can't imagine that West Ham are playing, paying such high wages in excess of anything anyone else would pay. I don't think that's the case. I mean, we've seen um, Perkins leave relatively recently because he didn't feel that he was being remunerated to the amount that he would have liked. We've seen it numerous times. I can go through the list. We've done it many times uh, on this channel. Players have left, young players, because they don't think we were paying enough in our contract offers. So it's hard for me to think that these players are signing on, on the dotted line at West Ham because they're getting paid more than anyone else. So I would imagine Mark Noble is telling them there's a way through. The club is changing. And I sort of hope it is, really, because... It's only very, very early in the season. And even if you discount this season, because I've seen nothing this season, be it against TSC and Lincoln, and, and with all due respect to those football clubs, they're unlikely to go the rest of this season and, and play many teams that are worse than those two teams. And I do mean that with the utmost respect. I, I absolutely, you know, it's not, not for me to dig out a League Two team or, or a Serbian team that's, you know, relying on money for Hungary to keep them afloat. That, that's, that's not the intent here. My point is West Ham have got a multi, multi-million pound squad and we are, should be significantly better than them. And my point is also the rest of the teams that we play in the Europa League stage are going to be better than TSC and the rest of the teams that we're being drawn against for the remainder of the season, both in the Premier League and in the Cup domestically, are going to be better than Lincoln City. So I think it's fair to say that the two best opportunities for David Moyes to try out those young players was them. So this season he's not shown any great intent, I think, to play the young players. And certainly historically, I'm not really seeing anything either. Maybe you could talk about the Dynamo Zagreb game where we were secure in the Europa League group and he did it then. Maybe he'll do that this season. But I'm not seeing a lot of chance for these players to impress. So maybe they've been told something. Maybe Mark Noble's told them we're going on loan. You, you know, we, we'll get you out there. But I can't imagine that Mark Noble has given them that assurance without receiving an assurance himself. And all I can think, and I am just thinking out loud here, that assurance must have come in one of two guises. Either David Moyes has said to Mark Noble, bring these players through, because if David Moyes doesn't bring any players through, then it's hard for David Moyes to really acknowledge Mark Noble's role as one that's authentic. Mark Noble probably takes his role very, very seriously. A technical director charged with bringing players from the youth teams and putting them in the first team. I would hope David Moyes respects that role. But if he doesn't, there's going to be no pathway for Mark Noble to bring the players through. So maybe, just maybe, he's received assurances from David Moyes. And maybe that's the way. But perhaps that's not it. There is another scenario, which is somebody at the club, and I'm not going to spend time musing over whether it's David Sullivan, Daniel Kratinsky, or some future buyer, of whom we don't yet know. But somebody is holding an influence on the club at the moment. That's the same person has decided to hire Daniel Krasinski, who has been allowed to exert some influence on the recruitment strategy at West Ham. Not only that has been heavily involved in actually bringing the players in, he's doing the negotiating now. Well, that's, that's quite serious, isn't it, really? That's quite a big shift from what we've seen previously at West Ham. I do wonder if that same person is the driving force between appointing a technical director. And I'm talking about Mark Noble here. Now, to appoint a technical director means, it's, I think it's safe to assume, that you've already decided that there is a need for a technical director. So whoever's appointed Mark Noble to build a pathway between the first team 
and the youth team and the academy has already decided that's what we need to do. The decision's already been made. The only question is then who is going to be the person to take that job? Of course, it's Mark Noble. So maybe, just maybe, the assurances being given to Mark Noble are not from David Moyes. Maybe they are, but maybe they aren't. And if they're not, it's somebody else at the club, pretty damn high up at the club, saying build a pathway. Make this work. And so for Mark Noble to be offering assurances to players and, and parents, and, and I'm just assuming he has. I don't know this, but I can't imagine that we sign these players without Mark Noble really working hard at it. For Mark Noble to give the assurances to the players, I would imagine Mark Noble's been giving assurances. And if they are from someone at the club who's just been saying, look, irrespective of whatever happens with the current manager situation, we will ensure that there is a pathway for the first team. I don't know. Uh, you know, I say this to use one of my favourite cliches, um, you know, maybe two and two together and coming up with five on this occasion. And maybe just maybe that the confidence that Mark Noble has that these players are going to get a chance isn't coming from David Moyes at all. Maybe it's coming from Tim Steiton, or maybe it's actually coming from the guy that appointed Tim Steiton. Whatever happens, I hope they get a chance. I really do. Because I really would like, when I see this news, that Daniel Rigger or Marshall or George Earthy are signed to new contracts, I'm excited. And then there's a part of me that that excitement dissipates and on a drop of level, I'm like, okay. Um... You know, sort of melancholy, if you like, where I'm thinking they're not going to get a chance, are they? But I think I think that. I'm not sure they think that. I hope they don't think. Well, they wouldn't sign the deal, would they? I think more importantly, Mark Noble doesn't think that. Because I think he's got a tough job on his hands. But maybe Noble doesn't think he's got a tough job on his hands. If he's confident of getting him through to the first team... I'd love to know where that confidence is coming from.